I'm going to do a terrible job pronouncing the reporter's name and refer to her as the reporter or the deliberately mispronounced name, Gillian. The reason for that is the actual real pronunciation, according to one or two web pages that were willing to try to pronounce it from Russian, said it was Gillian or Gillian or Dillian. The G and D noise is kind of mixed together on purpose. It's a specific way of pronouncing it, I guess. Guy Tan Shia. Va. Shiava. So Gaitan Shiava Gillian. Now I'm going to call her Jillian because it's easier to pronounce. And it's already, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm just going to completely not pronounce it correctly just to make it easier to talk about. This is a journalist or a reporter out of Bulgaria. So we'll just call this person the reporter, Bulgarian reporter. We're going to talk about the December 16th Aleppo. Uh, propaganda war. Syria and both sides. Both sides. Please remember what year this was and who was in charge of what and how many cookies. A disinformation war that fooled CNN and Fox and most European Union nations. France has slightly more suspicion about stories they're fed over the internet, so they ended up debunking 90% of this. Most of it's in French. Good luck reading it. During 2016 and many other years, I've had to debunk so much propaganda and so much bullshit that I'm going to explain something to you. The the belligerents, let's say, uh, Al-Qaeda and Syria are fighting. They're both going to create propaganda and they're both going to tell the truth at whenever it's convenient. Next, any country that wants to interfere with this, the United States, Russia, China, North Korea, for whatever reasons they may have, or maybe just for the pure pleasure of creating chaos, I mean, I'm not kidding, will create propaganda. So just assume that's happening. Next, seriously, CNN and Fox on the same day posted the same fake story with slightly different spins on it because they had to make it about whatever political party they wanted to choose that day. Ironically enough, uh, Fox promoted Democrats and CNN promoted Republicans, depending on what way the story was going. That was a very headachey year for me. But anyway, Aleppo had a war going on where you had belligerents that were funded by external sources and internally and within ethnic groups and within religious groups, and they would fight against each other in ways that you would think, why are you fighting each other? You're supposed to be allies. Yeah, but now we're shooting each other. Next, they got so many weapons that were either uh, given as military assistance by various countries and acknowledged, and then stole it so it looked like Russia was arming both sides. Remember, there's more than two sides here. Same thing with the United States getting blamed for that. They would steal each other's weaponry or find duds that didn't blow up and repair them. That is absolutely something that happens, if you don't know that. Next... Other countries that weren't even involved ended up with their armaments showing up because the stuff would get stolen by somebody on base. That was embarrassing, so they normally wouldn't report it. And it would get sold on the open market. A lot. So if you found a cache of Bulgarian rockets controlled by uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or your grandma, it was probably stolen and then sold in Bulgaria not shipped by the Bulgarian government or by by the, the country of Georgia or the country of, uh, uh, well, any of them, like the Ukraine, anybody. D- don't assume you know the sources. Now we'll get back to the Bulgarian uh, journalist. Fired after doing a story on this and dumping it saying Al-Qaeda warehouse in Aleppo, December 2016, had Bulgarian illicit weapons. Now, I want to point out that this was a gigantic shit fest that caused a lot of people to be disenfranchised and disillusioned with news. A lot. While the news was unironically screaming fake news, most of them did retractions and explained that they'd been lied to and fooled. It didn't do any good, because then, okay, what are we supposed to believe? What's the answer? A legit question. One of my friends at the time, uh, the Logan Runnan channel, uh, had a video up saying, why is there a neo-Nazi symbol on one of these? That doesn't make any sense. It looks like an iron cross. No, it's actually a crosshair on a rocket, but that's not the point. The point is, 
Let's look up the serial numbers. And the knuckleheads on Reddit had already found out, yeah, this is a weaponry that was shipped to a completely unrelated country. Somebody found it in a depot and sold it because they wanted to get a new Porsche or something. I mean, nothing was clear. It's a war, fog of war thing. So now you might have looked up the Bulgarian reporter and found diplomatically funded and protected Eurasia genetic bio lab weapons in Ukraine and other countries. International arms traffic against Russia. Because it has to be fixating on Russia? Really? Okay. This is done by the CIA and the Pentagon through Silkway Airlines, private cargo airlines in Aber- Azerbaijan. Yes, I can't pronounce shit. Azerbaijan apparently is another country. This week. I hope. Still. But anyway... Let's continue. Or was it back just then? Well, no, this is uh, recent. As recent as 2018. Wait a minute, that was... No, no, no. It was literally just 2018. These stories are sometimes rehashes from 2018. Let me explain. This reporter can look up shit on Wikipedia. Yes or no? This reporter can look up a PDF file called 2019 something something ukraine weapons and... Another set of files. Right? Fact checking. Bioweapons are are being funded by the CIA and Pentagon. Now, some of you are already going, bullshit. This content is aimed at the Russian population. Bulgarian typings look a lot like Russian type-ups. If somebody produces news in a country that has a very similar or identical language... It'll be absorbed by the country that's intended as the target for this information or disinformation. Again, I don't know that this Bulgarian uh, uh, reporter is or isn't a propagandist, but even after fog of war, this individual still reports that she did not make a mistake. Now, that could just be ego, or maybe she's completely right. Now we're done evaluating the Bulgarian uh, reporter. Before 2018, long before, a broad disinformation campaign by the government of Russia, not Soviet Union, was put out aimed at being consumed by people in Ukraine, Georgia, and any other neighbors or border states around Russia's or the Soviet Union's former sphere of influence to discredit or make people just ask questions about the United States or any other pro-Western activities because they were seen as pro-Western. There is a conspiracy theory that is among even ordinary citizens in Russia that everybody surrounding Russia is against Russia. Old, old scores to settle all the way to it being some giant conspiracy. They also teamed up with China because border connections and similar attitudes and also North Korea at one time doing a propaganda campaign, amplifying suspicious activity memes and alleging them from long before 2018 all the way to today from channels that claim to be patriot accounts within every one of these countries that you can trace back to Chinese, Russian, or other IP addresses, and even people doing really good, good old boy accents. I mean, they're pretty convincing. I've outed dozens of these. It doesn't matter where they are. And they swivel back and forth and make new channels. And it's it's not even whack-a-mole. They're just jello. Nailing it to a tree ain't going to work. Use dynamite. So, the dynamite is, when you're told something that sounds like it's meant to be listened to by Russians and is deeply anti-American, but it claims to be done by an American patriot who's whistleblowing because he loves his country, it's almost always a fucking lie. Now we have a Bulgarian claiming her own government supplied weapons to Al-Qaeda and and, and jihadists in a war unrelated to anybody here uh, in Aleppo. Or she's simply a shill for the Russian government's pro-Russia, Russia-controlled media. The uncontrolled Russian media called bullshit on her a couple of times. I can only translate part of it. This is very much only in Cyrillic alphabet countries here. Okay? I can't evaluate it well. Someone else has to. And then translate it for us stupid Americans. 
But this has been a long-running campaign to create just fucking chaos and confusion. This is not going to go away. Now, I want to point out what may be caused this. The claim by Russia is what I'm going to about to discuss is nothing but a uh, a shell game with Russia uh, uh, with a CIA and the Pentagon attempting to ruin and and infiltrate the bodily fluids of Russia. Yes, I'm making fun of them, but here we go. After the fall of the Soviet Union 1991, the threat of existing weapons of mass destruction destruction had to be dealt with. I mean, even the Russians said, we can't track all of our nuclear warheads. They really did actually eventually say that. Two U.S. Senators, Sam Nunn and Richard Luger, not the firearm, spearheaded a program that got called the Nunn-Luger Program or Proposal, and it became the Soviet Threat Reduction Act, a cooperative threat reduction program within the Defense Department's Defense Threat Reduction Agency. This was overtly stating, because Russians have lost control over some of their stuff, and or they need help or have requested it, but not from the United States, the idea was to go ahead and just, you know, fuck it, let's track all the stuff that was stored. The Russian government, just like the United States government, would do need-to-know basis storage of weaponry. Anything from bioweapons, mustard gas, nuclear warheads, all the way down to just grenades and stuff. And the stuff has a time limit to it. After which, if you grab one of these things, it might blow up in your hands. By the way, in Aleppo, one of the death gr- groups of deaths from ordinary citizens trying to defend their city was claimed to be an attack by Name That Group. They had gotten a hold of weaponry that blew up in their face because it was outdated, you know, sweating dynamite style stuff. That was the big deal. Even the Russian government says, we don't know where we stashed everything. Only a few people said it, but it's easy to do that. Russia, like Rome, got so big it started collapsing on itself. This is one of many things that caused the collapse of the Soviet Union. That's why it's the Russian Federation. It's a group of states or sub-states cooperating, trying to just stay organized. They can't be centralized government. They can't do communism as much anymore. Since twenty, excuse me, 2005... This threat reduction agency also decided to provide technical support to the Ukraine's Ministry of Health, their version of the CDC, to improve its public health labs because biohazard, bioweapons from Russia had been deposited. Because that came out, Russia said, no, you're making bioweapons. That's where this comes from. They're just, I know what I am, but what are you? I know what you are. Oh, that's what you are, but what am I? This is literally them flipping a story on its head so it has the same search engine ranking and says the exact opposite. They're being contrarian. Anyway, the, this whole project is owned and operated by the Ukrainian government and has been tracked down that way repeatedly by independent journalists. As seen in a 2012 re-upload of the agreement between the Ukraine and the U.S. signed in Kiev, or Kiev, I thought it was Kiev, uh, 2005, August 9th. Now, the whole point of this was it was them providing equipment and helping them with technical data and sending technicians, but it's funded by the Ukrainian government. And, uh, again, is Gillian or Gillian or Dillian lying or just making mistakes or just reporting what she's been fed? Many reporters on Fox News say, "I'm I'm just reading what's on the sheet of paper. I didn't investigate this. That's legitimate. The CNN correspondent isn't the one in the field getting the data. And that's literally the whole deal. Is this factual? The reporter has to provide proof. I'm not seeing it. These are rehashes of claims from years ago. And they were motivated by people pointing out they found bioweapons from Russia and other countries. The labs were set up, and ever since our recent infection all over the planet, Russia has been screaming louder that it's a bioweapon lab because because it's propaganda for internal consumption. That's why most of it's Cyrillic. That's why poorly translated versions like what I'm doing here are the norm. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Do I think that this is accurate? I would have to say I need to see proof. Without proof, it shouldn't even be brought up. But it may be true. I just don't think so. Gut feeling? Nope. Take that for what you will. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.